In today's video, I want to talk for a bit about the lens coat lens cover for the Sigma 60 to 600 f 4.5 to 6.3 DG sport lens. This is not a sponsored video. Lens coat did not send this to me to review. I purchased this with my own money and have been putting it through real world personal usage. Lens coat covers are primarily made out of neoprene. Some sections may have a clear plastic section, which allows you to see the controls that a lens might have. The covers help protect the exterior of the barrel from damage. Now, in my experience, telephoto lenses are more prone to this because they're larger and more cumbersome to work with. And there's even the valid argument that these can help out with camouflage, especially with white lenses that are more reflective and brighter and that could spook off more sensitive wildlife subjects. Installing the lens coat covers is pretty straightforward in my opinion. Now, this is already installed, so this isn't an installation video, but I'll just walk you through it really quickly. The cover's actually made up of multiple strips as the lenses themselves are also made up of multiple parts. Some of these parts rotate, some of these zoom in and out. No matter which lens you're getting a lens coat for, before you put on the strips, you need to identify the parts in the order. It's going to help when you slide each strip on one by one and get it into place. Starting at the back of the lens near the camera mount, let's talk about each of these strips. The first one is small and normally out of the way. I can't imagine it is protecting much or is really that useful in the grand scheme of things. The next strip covers controls that manage stabilization, autofocus, and custom function programming. There's a clear plastic window that allows you to see the controls. I can say from experience, it is very hard to adjust these settings while out in the field. I have very seriously considered cutting out this little piece of plastic because I don't think the trade-off for protection is worthwhile considering how much this gets in the way when trying to adjust these controls. Also, the window is not centered well on the controls and cuts off some of the lettering, making it a little bit harder to read from the outside. Next up is the strip that covers the tripod collar. It already came cut to allow for features like the rotation lock and neck strap mount to be accessible. The only complaint here was installation, was getting this cover over the tripod mount itself. I had to really stretch and pull it, and at one point I felt like I was gonna tear it, so I barely got this one on. This was the hardest piece to install. Now this strip right here has been a bit of a headache. It covers the manual focus ring. Now even though this is a modern lens with autofocus, there are plenty of scenarios that still and do come up that I need to use manual focus for. I have personally always relied on the tactile experience of feeling that ribbed rubber ring right here when I'm looking for my focus rings. And that way I know my fingers are on the right spot of the lens. With this strip on, I cannot feel the rubber grip. And on more than one occasion, I found myself trying to rotate the wrong part of the lens. And without this extra grip, my finger slides very easily over the surface. I have to make a conscious effort to press down harder than usual to create enough friction to move the focus ring. Moving up to the next strip, we again have another little plastic window for the focal length lock. But I will say, unlike the controls back here, this one actually isn't hard to work with. I've been able to lock and unlock my lens pretty easily through this little window. So this one hasn't been an issue. However, one feature that LensCode did not compensate for are these customizable control buttons that can be found on the same ring. Now there are three of these in total, one on the top, one on the left, and one on the bottom. And when the cover is down like this, you can't hardly feel them through the neoprene. And what has happened on a number of occasions, because I actually set the function controls to change my focus type, is that I've accidentally pressed them, not realizing it, and it changed my focus type. So I would lift up my camera, go take a shot, and I usually work in point focus mode, and it's like an area focus mode. And when you have like a moment to react to a subject, especially in wildlife photography, that split second where you realize your focus is kind of screwed up, you can lose the shot and I am debating removing the cover altogether because it's actually been a pretty large inconvenience. Next is the zoom ring strip. This covers the ring just enough, all the while still leaving the lettering of the focal lengths visible. I have no real complaints about this section right here. 
Overlapping the strip of the zoom ring is this other strip that's more like a skirt. This covers the barrel of the lens when it's fully extended like this. Now this little feature right here is actually one of the big reasons why I got this lens cover. A common mistake that I've seen time and time again out in the field is when people are shooting, especially like in inclement weather, and they get snow and rain built up on the barrel, and before they wipe it off, they pull the barrel back in. Oh my God, like I just cringe whenever I see that. Yes, there are these little gaskets and rings on the inside that's supposed to keep contamination out, but you're really pressing your luck when you do this. And something that most people are already aware of is how with these zoom lenses, as this changes physically, it's sucking air into the barrel. And even though the filters and the gaskets and all that inside the weather ceiling are supposed to be filtering that out, you will get contamination at some point inside your barrel. Now, Lensco does not advertise this that I saw as a dust filter. And I don't think it's going to filter out really fine dust like what I ran into in Utah. That stuff was pretty fine. However, I'll take any protection that I can get to help keep any kind of contamination from getting inside this barrel when I zoom back out. Now up towards the front of the barrel is one more little strip right here that the little skirt piece goes over as well. So there's the extended barrel and this just pulls up over that like so. And the last section really isn't on the lens itself, but it covers the lens hood. Now it does make things a little bit tighter if you want to use that soft hood the lens comes with. It barely, here, it barely catches the Velcro as you can see, but it will still work. So I don't really have an issue with this. Now I do have some strong opinions about this product and I would give it a score of six out of 10. With that said, I don't know of any better options on the market for protecting your expensive telephoto lenses. Despite the problems I have with this cover, I'm gonna keep it on. I'm just gonna have to modify it to make it work because this cover and the inconveniences cost a lot less than the lens did. And I do wanna make a very important note here concerning lens covers in general. Usually lens covers are found on telephoto lenses. Usually telephoto lenses are found in the hands of wildlife photographers or maybe even sports photographers. And more often than not, those photographers can be found shooting in well, not so great weather conditions. Already on one occasion, I came back from the field and this cover was fairly soaked or heavily damped, I guess is a better way to put it. And when that happens, you have got to take every one of these pieces off the lens and let them dry individually. This shouldn't have to be said, but I'm gonna say it anyways, moisture is not the friend of your camera gear. So once already, I had to take off this strip right here on the tripod collar, let it dry, then put it back on. And each time it's been a massive pain. And so far I haven't ripped it. I hope this information was useful to help you make a more informed decision before your next purchase. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.